Hey guys, it's Decker in here. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to set up MSI Afterburner so that way you can use it to monitor your specs or just use it for testing if you wanna benchmark something. So let's get into it. The first thing you're gonna need to do is look up MSI Afterburner on Google. Now, I will have a link to it down below. So once you go to that link, it'll take you to this page here. And once you're on this page, all you have to do is click the download the 4.65 final. And this is the, like the most recent version of MSI Afterburner. Now it will take a second to actually start downloading, but once you see it starts downloading on your computer, you should get a zip file. So all you need to do is go to your file explorer. From here, you need to go to your downloads, go to MSI Afterburner, where the zip file's at. And what you wanna do is right click on it and then click extract all. And you just wanna run this. Once the file is unextracted, you should see a little application that says MSI Afterburner Installer 465. We just wanna run this like so. And of course, you're just gonna install Afterburner. You have Nitro 360 for gamers. We're just gonna disable that. You don't really need that. Now, of course, it will install MSI Afterburner and also River Turner. You make sure you have both of these. Once MSI Afterburner is fully installed, you should get a little pop-up like this with your GPU, memory, a volt, all that stuff. But the big thing you wanna do to set up MSI Afterburner is go into setting gear here. Once you're in here, you're gonna have a few different things to have access to. What you wanna go to is monitoring. Now, in monitoring, there's a few things you need to do before you can actually start monitoring your GPU and checking your specs and all that jazz. First of all, you have your GPU temperature and we have the information. We show in on screen display. That's the first thing you wanna check. This way it just shows up on your actual game when you're gaming and you can see like the tabs on the left or right side wherever you wanna place it. And then you of course can actually override the group name. Now, keep in mind when you override the group name, you wanna make sure to name it whatever your actual GPU is. So for example here, if I wanna do this for me, I have a 2080 Super. I can label this as 2080 Super or whatever PC spec you have. Now, the other big thing with this is too, make sure to take that group name is Control A, Control C and copy it because you wanna start applying this to whatever your GPU stuff is. So let's say GP usage, of course, same rule apply. You wanna go in here, change that to whatever your GPU you're using. You can also identify which parts each spec thing is for by just looking down here where the group name is. If it says GPU, it's GPU. You go to memory usage, this will be like your RAM and stuff. So what I recommend you do is enable a few things. First of all, enable, of course, your on-screen display for, of course, your GPU usage, name it whatever you want with the group name. You can do the same thing with your, uh, what's it called, FB usage. Just label it and, of course, name its group name. And then for video bus, we want to enable that. Now, I'm not going to go over which each thing does. I'm just going over the main ones I primarily use for my testing. So that way, you guys can just, like, follow along with me. Then GPU bus usage, we, of course, can enable that. Instead of calling this memory, we're going to call this VRAM because we know that's a part of the GPU. And we're just going to copy this suffix and uh apply it to the ones where it says mem cores for our gpu we can just enable that now another thing to keep in mind if you don't want to use something you can't uncheck it so we're going to uncheck the power percentage power fan speed fan speed too like i don't really use any of this fan stuff if you want to you can do but most of this stuff is just kind of like there it's not necessary the only thing you really need from the cpu temperature is really just cpu temperature if you do the other ones these are kind of individually for each of the this one's actually for the thread uh and then of course for cpu same thing you can show it on screen display you can override the group name and then you name what your cpu is so i have the 57 g which is a ryzen cpu we of course can enable that and then what we'll do control a control c to copy that and then we're going to disable all the cpu utilization since we know we only want to monitor one of them on screen display enabled group name of course paste this on in here control v apply and we just want to disable all the other core clocks for the cpu because we're not using these we just want the one that's grouped up together and then stock clock we want to enable on screen display paste our cpu name in we're good there. CPU power stuff, we can save all this. This is like the longest part, just enab disabling the stuff you don't wanna use. Then CPU power, you can actually enable that. So we are gonna put that there, apply that. RAM usage is for like your memory and stuff like that. So we'll actually group this up with the uh, memory. So here we're gonna do. And we're gonna apply both of these, enable both of these on. We're just leave it as is, we're not gonna mess with it. We're gonna disable commit charge. First of all, we gotta enable our frame time. So this will just show like our FPS in game. You can show your minimum frame rate or average frame rate, but I only use one of these. So we're gonna of course uh, just leave this as is. We'll do on screen display, but we're not gonna change the overall name. And then there's some other stuff down here, but you don't need to mess with this unless you really wanna get crazy with your percentages for your lows, 1% lows, your average, and then minimum. And once you do that, you should see in this little taskbar here, you click the little arrow up. You should see River Turner is applying because it now knows, hey, you displayed, you wanna show some stuff on screen. It's gonna be like, okay, you can actually load this on up here and pick which part of the PC corner screen you want to do. For me, I usually keep it on the right side here. 
And then of course you want to increase the size of it. You just drag this on up and make it bigger or smaller. For me personally, I keep it pretty big just because I do a lot of testing. And then when I record, I like to have it big for mobile users. Now, another thing you can do with Ruby Turner is enable a backdrop for your text color. So you can see here, it's just gonna be your text. But if you go to on-screen display fill, and you enable this, you'll actually have a backdrop behind it if you want to actually do so to make it a little bit easier to read. But once you have all this stuff on up, you can't actually close this whatever you want, but I usually just keep it open. Then you load up a game of choice to actually start testing. Now, some games will have actually some things you need to set up for them to actually work properly. Like CSGO is a perfect example. Uh, CSGO used to work perfectly fine. Then literally CS2, change how the source works. So you actually have to change the settings in a MSI after the birder to make CSGO work perfectly properly. So if you want to see a video on that, I will have that uh, linked at the end or even in the description of the video. So that way you can set it up for CSGO if you're wondering how to do that properly. So once we get in game, you can actually see, we can actually test our specs because you can see our RAM usage getting kicked in, our FPS meter, which is awesome. Yeah, that is of course how you enable MSI Afterburner on your PC for testing or just for gaming in general if you like to have it set up. If you guys did find this video helpful here today, make sure to smash like button, get subscribed to some future tech content. I'll see you for another one. Tech Grant out.